From deep within his Nebraska fortress comes Rapidly Aging Technology with another video. Hello and welcome to another episode of Rapidly Aging Technology. Today we're looking at a piece of equipment which we're going to crack into. So those of you who um, like my channel for, for actually getting into things, computers or whatnot, well you're in luck because today we are doing exactly that. So what is here before you? Well, I'll, I'll say this, it didn't cost $20, it cost $9 because today happened to be Purple Day at Goodwill. If you don't have Goodwill stores in your area, they're um, basically a donation thrift store, junk store chain, uh, and you can sometimes get a good deal on, on things. So what we have here is a CD player um, from the 80s. We're gonna turn it on. We're gonna see if it turns on. We're going to see if it plays a disc. We'll see if it actually puts out music. Um, and maybe we'll, we'll, and we're gonna crack it open and we'll get it cleaned up. If there's a problem, if this thing doesn't actually play, because I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. I mean, it was cheap enough to give it a shot. Maybe we can discover the problem uh, together. Um, or if it plays, maybe it sounds awful and we can figure out what's going on. So what do we have? We have a Pioneer a compact disc player, the PD4050. Um, and that says SR. I'm not sure uh, what that exactly means. But um, this appears to be, looking at the options on it, and I did a little bit of reading online. Probably not the highest end. It is, while well, the front is kind of metallic looking, it is plastic. The rest of the body is metal. Um, this display doesn't have time or anything, which was kind of a nicer uh, feature to have. So I'm thinking it's not particularly special. So what do we have on the front? Power button, fairly simple. We got the disc tray. Compact disc logo, open and close, track, slash minute. I wonder if it, okay, do you think it counts the minutes as you go and then when it moves to the next track, it says the track number and then goes back to counting minutes? Not sure. Uh, program and repeat lights, because it does appear to have those functions. Um, play and pause indicators, open close button, repeat button. Disk stabilizer. Let's see if we can read this. Six, uh, 18 step? What does that say? 18 step random access program. Anti resonance construction. Okay. We have program memory. So I guess that's if I want to. I might have to look up the manual to see how to use I haven't used a program feature um, on a uh, CD player, especially without a remote and actual number entry. Manual search, track search, big old play button, stop clear, pause, digital filter for sharply focused sound. Hmm, okay. Bottom has this interesting uh, honeycomb pattern and some schmutz, which is uh, whatever it is, it's hard. Uh, it kind of reminds me of tar. Um, I wonder if. This was something that made it into someone's garage and somehow got tar or some other construction or home repair or goop on it. Who knows? Interesting design. Um, this, I, I imagine this is part of their anti-resonance scheme because this uh, pressing this pattern into a sheet of metal will make it more rigid than just having a flat sheet. So that might be what they're going after. The top is Filthy with just a, some um, lines pressed in, probably for decoration, and a little bit, little bit of rigidity on the top. Not you know crazy amount. Sides, lines, and screws. Same there. Oh, and I hope that the um, video is a tad less grainy than the last couple. This room has better lighting. I've also put in a much more powerful light. So feel free to tell me if it looks better than the last one. I've also bumped the quality setting up a touch. I'm going to see how a 24. Uh, megabits per second uh, is handled on the G5. Well, that's the top. On the back we have uh, manufacturer date and I'm going to give Pioneer a big old thumbs up on this guy because that is the simplest manufacturer date that uh, well it's simpler than a lot of components out there. 
just tells you March 1987. So it's uh, quite old. We have RCA out, and then these are control in and out. So no digital out, so this can't be used as a transport. Um, it is a standard analog CD player only. Back we have uh, its name again, Pioneer Electronic Corp, made in Japan. Usual caution labels and don't open it. Um, for A cla class B commuting device, pursuant to do. certification complies with blah, 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 blah. It's UL listed, a little bit of a rust spot, and it's power cable. And the XX, I think that's a goodwill thing. A lot of the stuff I ever get from there has it. And the cord is a pretty standard cord. Just a polarized plug, nothing special. It looks to be in good shape. Nothing overtly seems like it's unsafe. The stress strain relief seems fine. Uh, so let's, let's give this a, a, a test power up. Oh, before I do that, let's give you a little bit of re size reference. So here is a ruler. So we have a foot and what, so 12, 16, 17 inches wide. And sideways, we are looking at 12, I don't know, 12 and a half inches. And it's not particularly tall. Maybe about three inches-ish. So it's, it's a reasonably compact unit uh, for a compact disc, which is good. So now let's get it plugged in. Oh, I should also specify, because um, I might as well get everything hooked up now. We're going to plug it in and see if it turns on. If it turns on, we're going to put it on a disc and see if it'll play. But in case it's weird or bad, I don't want to hook it right into the main system. So we're going to use this little 808 little Bluetooth speaker, um, which has an auxiliary connector. It says line in, so it should theoretically take line level. But uh, we're not going to play it too long because it might be a bit loud for this guy. Um, and I have tested this guy with it not powered on to see if it will um, Will this Bluetooth speaker um, work as a passive? Will, will passively put out anything, even if it's faint from loud sources? And it doesn't. So we are going to have to turn it on. Rather than, I was hoping I could not turn it on so that it might, I don't know, less chance of being damaged if this thing is weird. But um, no, this needs to be turned on. So we'll do that. It has been charged. And to get power to it, we're taking, well, not power, but sound. We have a RCA cable that goes into another set of RCA jacks, which then convert into your standard eighth inch stereo jack. So that is going to be our setup if this thing works. And we also have um, some Bach on CD uh, as a test. On uh, all digital recording, the DDD means the, it's the, the original recording was digital, it was mastered digitally and then on digital format. So on a CD, the last D will, the last letter will, should always be D, but the other two could be A if it was an analog recording and then um, edited and mastered um, on analog equipment. Uh, it could be AAD, for example, or ADD. There can be a few things. I don't think there's ever gonna be a DAD, but I mean, who knows? That's that. This is an interesting case because it has this, these grippy bits in the middle. Anyway. Let's get this thing hooked up. All right, I have placed it on top of this um, Mita stereo receiver, which is from, also from the, this is from the 70s, also from Goodwill. And the radio tuner, fantastic. But the right channel on, um, and if you just play that through its record out into something else, plays fine, great. But its internal amplification needs some work. Right channel is has lots of pops and distortion on headphone and speakers, so it needs to be repaired, but it's very pretty. So I set this on top so you can see it. Uh, we're also going to get the, I'm gonna turn the speaker on first so that if we get any noise from the, if this turns on and we get any noise from it, we might be able to hear it out of here. So let's just get this thing on. It's this little turn on sound. Moment of truth. Let's see if she's happy. All right, I didn't really hear anything out of this guy. Let's 
I do hear some, some static. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's something coming through. Um, maybe some things need to be cleaned up, but okay. So it's on. Let's see if she opens. And right away. All right. So this disc tray is weird. It's got these nubbins. Okay, and they're spring loaded. And then they're spring loaded in, in couples. So these two are linked. Those two are linked. That's interesting. What's the let's let's try some special effects of just rolling over on our sides here. Well that's the underside. And it's overall it's not super dirty there, but if you look in between. Yeah, there's some there's some dirt inside, so I will want to crack this open anyway to clean, but let's um let's put a disc in. And I I guess it just sits on top like that. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is part of the disc stabilizer system. Okay, I don't know if you could hear the, hear the squeaking, but it sounded a touch raspy. Okay, and it said there are 11 tracks, and now it's set to one. It still sounds like there's something going on in there. But we'll hit we'll hit the big play button. And we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm stopping it because of you know royalty stuff. Though I'm not sure if this particular recording has any issues. We have sound. Okay, um, what else? What can we do here? Well, I'll hit play and then I'll hit pause to see if the pause light comes up because we do have these to look at now. Oh, the button might be a little rough. Okay, we have pause. I'm going to skip forward. We're at two, still paused. Uh, what if I program mem memory? Maybe not. We'll hit stop. Um, program memory. Okay. Um, program. Program. Um, okay. And so now if I hit play. Well, it seemed like I was programming something. Okay, I've cleared it. Program memory. Okay. All right, so I've programmed in, a, I think might be programming in, a, a couple of tunes. So maybe if I hit play, it'll start the first one. If I oh, 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 oh. Aha. Okay, so the, the programming at least affects the uh, the skip function. Um, I don't know if it does raw playback, so that'll be interesting. If I can hook this up to uh, something that doesn't sound so awful, because this this guy is not happy with the way it's set up, <laughs> um, we'll do a, a test of that. I don't know if I can have you listen with me, but we will try. Um, I'll, I'll report back. So I, I, we're going to bring this into the living room and we'll see if any different sounds come through. Maybe this thing isn't really revealing the whole story. Um, ugh. Okay, well, it's working. I mean, this is good. Uh, the repeat button, so I'm going to clear out that. Is repeat going to... Is repeat 
one song. Probably the song you put it on is what it'll repeat at. Okay, let's uh, take the disc out. We'll move this into the other room, which might not have ideal lighting for this part. Kind of listen to it there. And then we'll come back in to tear this thing apart. Um, and then I'll probably clean it, maybe put it back together, and we'll, we'll see what we can see. All right, we were in the living room, and we've just temporarily set this on top of the radio tuner. We're going to um, see if she plays. And um, if she does, if she sounds okay, then we know we're pretty good. And then I just need to figure out um, if the program only applies to skip or if it actually will um, affect the play route. It seems to want to start at track one kind of default, but uh, hey, we'll, we will see. I also have my remote in my hand in case the volume is awful. Um, or if I'm on the wrong source. So let's get going. Okay. Okay, it's playing. So it definitely plays. It definitely plays cleanly. I didn't really hear any distortion or whatnot, even though those RCA jacks are not in the best shape. I will be using some deoxid on them. So, so far we have, we have a winner here. Now, okay, some of you are wondering, okay, well, why did you get this thing other than it being cheap and to make a video when you already have a CD changer and a laser disc player, which is a very good CD player, also from the same brand. Well, um, the system I got for Christmas, that kind of was the core where I started, um, it's now become a secondary for the bedroom, and it has a cassette deck with it, and it doesn't have a CD player. So this might turn out to be it. Um, I'm going to try playing it again, though, and see if its search noise is coming through the speakers or not. So I'm going to take my lavalier off and put it near the speaker. I have the volume down a bit lower, and we'll see, we'll see if you can hear anything coming through. So. Uh, we'll start there. Well, search is sounding fine. Let's mute this thing. So volume's way down. Let's see what we can hear from the machine itself. So there is, a, when it's spinning, there is a sound you can hear a little bit going. It's not really all that loud, though. Um, at startup, at least I think one of our attempts, it sounded like there's a little more going on. Let's, let's hit play with it nearby. Okay, didn't actually sound too bad. All right, so next step is going to be um, cracking her open, see what we can see on in the inside. All right, well, now that that's done, um, uh, I did test the repeat function. And as long as you actually only press it on the first song you want to begin your, not the repeat function, the, um, the program function, as long as you press it on the first song you want to turn, you turn it on and it registers that song and then move on to select other ones, then it will start playing at that song and kick over to each of the next when you skip around. If you hit it multiple times on one song, it actually cues it into in there more than once. The repeat function, I couldn't really figure out with, you know, I haven't seen the manual, so I'm not sure. Um, just turning it on on a song, I figured would recycle that song forever, and it didn't seem to. Um, also, it started having problems um, seeking it, just skipping ahead. Um, I ran a little CD 
head cleaner through it just in case, but you know, and there's nothing to watch there. You just run it through, skip over the little brushes, go on the head, go on the um, laser lens. Uh, didn't quite do it, so who knows what that is? Well, I mean, we're gonna crack in and we'll see what happens. Really wasn't much to see other than it was having some issues trying to get to song four, for example. So let's crack her open. All right, so while I'm uh, cracking open the machine and working through it, I thought I might um, voice over and go over the details I've found on this machine. So um, obviously it's a CD player. Um, the mechanism, I guess, is a PWY1010. Uh, the digital converter is, I think I, I think I'll end up pointing out the ship, a PCM56P-L. Frequency response is 4 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Um, the signal to noise ratio is 94 decibels. Total harmonic distortion is 0.009%. Line output of 1.8 volts. And we have some dimensions. It weighs just, just under 4 pounds. So that's the detail of this player. And while we're waiting, I figure I might as well mention... Um, if you're looking into, into getting into music, in particular, some sort of physical format, CD is a really great format to start with, primarily because it's so available. They're still making them, they still make the players, and a lot of uh, older players are also available, like this one, and probably ones in better shape, uh, nicer ones, um, ones that have digital outputs. While I have a softer spot towards, say, cassette, because you also have the ability to uh, record mixtapes. Now, you can burn your own CDs on a computer, but it's not quite the same as um, you know, recording in real time over to a cassette. And, and the uh, interplay of the analog tape formula versus your recording and your machine and the little nuances and, and, and flavors it can add. But CD is excellent. If you just want something to listen to, it's a great format, um, and I highly recommend having... I, I recommend you owning your things, right? Your music, your programs, your games. If you can just own them, I think you'll be much better off than always using streaming services or uh, basically renting software. Not a fan. Anyway, those are the updates on there. We'll get back to the cracking open, and I'm sure I'm already blabbing about something, because that's what I do. We're going freehand for a bit, so uh, pardon the seasickness. So, we have our power transformer and everything there. Uh, looks like the power button is back here, so that button is just going on a, uh, a rod. Let's go back here. I don't know why that's a thing, um, why it isn't e easier to just put the switch up front, but um, this is not the only component to do that. Looks like we have a ground cable going to the chassis. And here we have the circuit board. So let's turn this guy around and see. So what's that a Mitsubishi chip of some kind? Uh, then we have PCM56P with a BB. Okay, I think I read that there is this is a brown burr DAC in here, which um, I don't know if people who are more knowledgeable of things, if this is a particularly desirable one or it's supposed to sound nice, but um, there you go. We have this big chip, which is a Sony chip, uh, 7M12 CXA1082A. Also have Another Sony, the 6X08 CXA1081. A Pioneer chip, the, um, the 783, 614040 Focus 2SG36 PD3093A. Um, and another Sony chip there. I'll let you look at that one because I, I, you don't watch the video to have me read chips at you. So this is for what, 1987. This is already um, how small they were able to get the 
the, the boards to, to be a CD player. Um, there is some front circuit board stuff. And then we have the mechanism here, which I'm going to touch it is mainly plastic. Have, it says disc stabilizer. Hmm. I wonder if the rail needs to be lubricated. I will put some, I'll put a dot of, uh, not uh, sewing machine oil, but um, there's a, a, an electric motor um, oil, which is a little thicker um, on there. It tends to last a little better. That should help. I don't have any lithium grease or anything like that. Um, it does feel quite dry and that might be some of the noise it's causing. So I'll give it a little drop and I'll try to make sure not to get it too messy. Um, then we'll, I think what we'll do is we'll plug it in and we'll put a CD in and just kind of watch the mechanism function. So I'm going to get that little drop of oil on there, maybe let the mechanism get worked back and forth a bit and then we'll watch it. All right, we are back. Um, now let's see if the, uh, well, what it does when I just turn it on, there might do, do be some seeking or self check. Okay, well, nothing much there. We'll have it crack open. Okay, that worked quick. And now we should be able to see a little more of the mechanism. So we have the laser mechanism there. I almost want to call it a cartridge. The big black thing that looks like it can move. And we have the rails that the uh, uh, door, not the door, the tray slides on. And a big kind of yellowed pulley with a belt, which seems to be Okay, for now, probably could use some changing, but I mean the thing is, I think that's what's what's um, activating the door. Let's let's close. Yep, that's what it's doing, and then it opens. That goes and pushes it down. So that's moving very smoothly. The trays could probably use some lubrication. There's actually a little bit that's still there. Um, let's get. A CD in here and see what we can see. We have that motor there, I'm guessing, for the laser mechanism. Yeah, so we'll go from this angle. That is all very smooth. Let's pop a CD in there. All right, our sacrificial CD, which has been working just fine, so it doesn't seem like it was damaged at all. And let's see if this one can also tell when I push it in. Yep. Okay, it spun it up and read it, and it already read the index, so that's fine. So I'm going to, on the control panel on the front, I'm going to skip the mechanism all the way to the last track of 11 and hit play. Let's see if it can figure itself out. Hmm. It's okay. Apparently, it's playing. I kind of figured it spun faster than that for whatever reason. I wonder what the noise. Is. Can you hear that? I'll put the uh, microphone near it. So I'm thinking that's part of the, maybe the stabilizing mechanism that's making any noise. It seems to be perfectly happy. Now if I, I'm going to just skip around. I'm going to draw it backwards into it. Let's, so pay attention. Hmm. Okay, you can see part of the laser cartridge right there. I don't think you can see the laser shining through. Um, I'm going to um, manually be seeking backwards, so it should just retract underneath the disc. Yep, and very slowly you can see that it's going, but it seems to be happy. I'm going to hit stop and just went back underneath it. I'm going to seek to number four, which was giving me 
problems for some reason. All right, so it's moved in. And it looks like it's happily playing because the play button flashes when it's trying to seek. Huh. Well, this is good. Let's see if we can play with around with that and, and fiddle with the noise. I'm going to hit, I'm just going to hit eject, which it should stop and then eject. Yep. yep. And we went back down and... Okay, well, when it's down, it actually is going into the, uh, the spindle at the bottom. And this is much smoother. But if there's a disc in here, it would push up on this a little bit. And so probably just some rubbing. But also, notice that the fingers, the weird stabilizer fingers, have dropped down. So good. luckily they're not rubbing on the disc either. So they must just keep it up to make it handy so the disc doesn't bump into the laser mechanism. Um, yeah. And then the uh, motor spindle connects in with everything. So neat little design. I'm going to clean up the front and the, and the top with some Windex and we'll just take a look at it at the end. Uh, so far this thing actually seems pretty much fully functional. Um, I'm not having any issues with it. One more thing, the entire mechanism, at least the laser carriage or whatnot, is mounted on uh, rubber. So it has some, some shock protection, which is really handy. So it's not a fancy um, CD player by any means, but it is fully functional. Um, those are the backs of the RCA plug. So I'm going to get this thing cleaned up a bit and we'll look at it at the end. So sorry about popping in and out, but uh, I thought that'd be important to mention that there's some stable. Up. So it looks like they have put some care into this mechanism. I don't know if these this upper stabilizer system is, is particularly special or not. Um, but sound wise, it seemed to be playing just fine to the main system. It just has a little bit of a noise while it's operating. And the little bit of 3-in-1 electric motor oil applied gently with a um, Q-tip to the laser rail um, seems to have been just fine. Um, ideally any moving part mechanism uh, of this mechanism would be using something like lithium grease. I don't have any and that was just to maybe loosen up and it didn't seem to have any issues this, with skipping. Um, maybe I will figure out how the repeat function works but the program function is actually simpler than I thought, so that's good. Well, we definitely got some grime off of it. All right, well, the lighting is not going to be very good, but and so you won't be able to see it much, but um, the front, while it does have some nicks and dings, the gold lettering here, which I thought was partially rubbed off, is popping out a lot more now. Um, it had that standard Goodwill, just brown dirt on it. <laughs> Everything Goodwill has always has the same kind of dust and the same kind of smell for whatever reason. Um, even different Goodwill locations. Maybe everything gets shipped to uh, central warehouses for a while and I don't know. But it looks much, much better. It seems to be playing fine. It had a little bit of a hiccup getting the CD started this first go around. But uh, I'm going to let it play completely through, let it run through a number of discs, and that should be it. Um, due to its age, I it should not be able to read, uh, I doubt it'll be able to read a disc that I burned myself. Um, I might try that and report back to you, but otherwise I don't expect it to work out. Because I don't have a switch box for my uh, mini system, well, my, not my mini system, but my small system, um, I'm having to run it through my cassette deck in record mode. <laughs> not an ideal situation and not something that I'm going to do forever. But just to get it going on top of my bookshelf here, um, yeah, that's what I'll do. Anyway, I hope that you have, you all have a great day and may you find some interesting things at Goodwill and other places. I'm going to leave the sticker on it because uh, if it decides to completely die, I can return it uh, for at least in store credit. Anyway, hope you folks have a great day and talk to you later.